All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Learn Robotics with Liz. Today, we are going to chat a little bit more about what robotics is at a broad standpoint. Before we hop into that, I did want to let you know that I help people get into the robotics industry. So if you're just starting out and you're looking for mentoring and guidance to help you get that next step in your career, you can join my robotics boot camp. Just go to learnrobotics.org slash boot camp. Sign up for a quick little call. We'll see if you're a good fit for the program. And if you are, you'll have the opportunity to join and work with me directly. Now on to today's video, I'm going to share with you kind of how I would go about explaining robotics to somebody that is trying to get an understanding of like what the robotics industry is and all the different pathways into robotics. So if you're listening to the podcast, I am recording video with this as well. If you're just listening to the audio version of this, you can view the video version, I believe on anchor.fm slash learn robotics. And for those of you watching the video, you'll have the full visual. I will do my best to kind of describe what I am drawing as I am building this out. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and pull up this whiteboard here. And we'll just kind of draw this out, map this out, talk a little bit more about the robotics industry and kind of my perspective on where I see it going. Um, Timeline from now, which is beginning of 2022 to, I don't know, we'll say like 2025. So the next few years and kind of where I would recommend starting if you are brand new to robotics and you know nothing about robots but you know that you're interested in technology and you want to start adding in some skills kind of what you can do to optimize or best improve your chances of getting into the industry so the first thing um what is robotics so i'm just going to write what And for me, like there's kind of two sides of this. If you've listened to other episodes, there's an episode where I talk about like two sides of the coin for robotics. There is like robots for robots. So the first one is literally getting into robotics to work on robots. Okay. So that's, that's the first side. The second side is getting into robotics to have a holistic view of interdisciplinary technology subjects. What do I mean by that? So interdisciplinary subjects. And what I mean by this is being somebody that understands and is literate in coding. So we have coding, which I'll call software. So you understand how to write software, how to read software, how to use software. almost like a foreign language. So like if you're bilingual or you're multilingual, you know multiple languages, you know how to communicate effectively um, with people in those other languages. And I would liken that to kind of like the language of robotics. So you're able to understand how to read and write and develop and interpret and debug with software. So there's that side of it. And part of, you know, integrated systems or technology systems, you have the coding, which is the first part. Then you have the electronics, which are going to be like your sensors. So we have electronics. Understanding how to wire up sensors, choosing sensors, understanding manufacturer data sheets, determining which would be the appropriate sensor, like the sensors themselves are going to feed data into your system. So you want to make sure that you're picking out the correct type of sensor that's going to give you the inputs, give you the environment readings that you need, that you can pull in using your software, and then use that information to make decisions and create that full feedback loop. And then the last component, these are super high level areas will be like the mechanics. So using motors, using mechanics, using motors, using um, infrastructure. So materials, hardware, the, what I would consider like the building core of what the device is, whether that is um, a structure, a vehicle, Um, you've got robots of different forms, 
So any sort of mechanical design or CAD model or material that you need to enclose or encase the electronics or the motors or the movement that would fall under there. So in my mind, this is going to be like the model, the drawings, the actual hardware itself, the installation, the building. So being able to do that. And so in my mind, like I had said, two sides of the coin, you are joining robotics to work on robots or you're joining robotics to have a very holistic view of interdisciplinary skills and how those different fields work together. Um, and so a lot of robotics engineers, they will kind of go either specialized working on particular types of robots, they will work on mobile robots, they'll work on industrial robot arms, they'll work on automated systems, they'll work at startups, or they will go and you know work on a particular type of robot, they will specialize either in the software, they will specialize in the electronics, they'll specialize in the mechanics, or they will have all of this information, which is kind of the path that I took, and they will use all of this to become holistic problem solvers in an organization where you look at a process and you find ways to optimize it and automate it. So robotics really gives you a lot of tools to move in whatever direction you want to move in. And for me, it's been very helpful being able to take a look at a problem and then figure out like, is this a software problem? Is this a mechanical problem? Is this a sensor problem? Is this even the right solution for the problem that we're having as an organization? How do we want to go about and solve this? And so a lot of it comes down to being able to solve problems in a variety of different ways and having the right set of tools to create the right solution. So I would kind of say like, you're not gonna use like a hammer to loosen a screw. You're gonna use a screwdriver, you're gonna use a drill. So being able to know what the right tool is and have a bunch of different technical tools at your disposal, robotics can help you in those ways. And so what I see happening over the next like three years or so between now and 2025, there was this article that came out, I think in 2020, that said there's going to be like 85 million, 97 million. That number keeps like going up. New robotics jobs coming out by 2025. And so as somebody that runs a robotics training organization with Learn Robotics, what we're trying to do is prepare people for that wave. And the people that want to be prepared and equipped with software skills uh, sensor skills, mechanical skills, and having like a broad sense of what they can do with that technology, with those skill sets to be successful in um, a career that is going to be more and more influenced by robotics and automation. And so something that I always tell people is if you're the person that is, you know, managing these robots or these automated systems, you're never going to be replaced by the robot because you like the organization is still going to need experts that understand exactly what to do when the process fails or exactly what to do to make the process better. And because we're seeing that influx of technology, um, having a background in robotics is going to give you that edge um, against just somebody that doesn't have that background or hasn't had the experiences in the robotics industry. And so a lot of what we do is we help people get a broader sense of the market, figure out where in the market they want to end up, whether that's working on a robot specifically or working on the robotics and automation industry as somebody that has those talents and working within organizations to improve and optimize processes and be kind of like that technical person that can provide solutions and plans um, moving forward. And so what I think it, that is like super valuable because the market is going, and you will see this in supermarkets as well, like the automated cash registers, or you'll see like the automated um, like ordering machines at McDonald's, like those are all systems that need to be managed by people that understand how the software, the sensors, you know, the process works. And so if you're the kind of person that can come in understanding how the business runs 
and have a bit of software sensor mechanical knowledge, then you're always going to be valuable. And I think the other sector is going to be primarily in manufacturing. Um, as we start to get more competitive in manufacturing and bringing manufacturing to the U.S., it's going to be critical that people have more technology background because there are going to be less hands-on repetitive tasks. A lot of those manual repetitive labor processes are getting replaced by robots purely because there's a lot of wear and tear on work on the workforce. Um, and a lot of the work that I've done with robotics and in industrial robotics, industrial automation is finding those, you know, critical tasks where the worker is doing something very labor intensive, like manual drilling to a particular torque, um, having somebody work in a factory doing that 10 hours a day and doing, you know, thousands of manual um, torquing, you know, procedures that leads over, you know, years of doing that, that leads to elbow issues and shoulder issues and um, just, you know, lots of issues with the actual worker later on in life. And if you're a person that is doing that type of role, um, I would highly encourage you to consider robotics as your friend, because if you can come in and manage a, a group or a work cell of robots that are doing those types of roles, then you will not only advance your career, but you will get yourself out of that position of doing something that's very repetitive, that is probably going to cause a workforce injury later. Um, and so a lot of companies are really just looking to improve and optimize their procedures so that they can um, provide better roles, better opportunities, but also introduce technology in a way that their workforce can manage it. Um, and so I worked with a lot of folks that were actually getting upgraded from doing the actual drilling activities to managing a group of robots that would do the drilling activities. And they would actually understand how the robots work. They would understand how to debug them if they got stuck and how to start the machine up, how to properly shut it down. And because they have these skills, they're in better paying roles and jobs that they enjoy a lot more. So like I had mentioned, we'll be seeing this probably across like supermarkets and definitely in manufacturing, the world that I came from. And we're probably going to see it a little bit more in business processes. There is a field of robotics, like a subset of robotics that you've probably heard of called RPA, and that is uh, robotic process automation. And we're seeing some pretty big innovations um, in what I would call like finance. So like in accounting and bookkeeping with the rise of um, automation and the rise of artificial intelligence, we're gonna see kind of this new marriage of AI um, in like FinTech, financial tech applications, as well as just general business processes. So like gone are the days where people are manually pulling reports. There are going to be robots that interface in between potentially different software systems that run on particular computers that are constantly you know, collecting data, putting together reports and sending that to whoever needs to see it. Uh, and we're seeing that now. I, if you're familiar with some of the, you know, common RPA softwares, there's UiPath, there are plenty of careers um, specifically um, working in like UiPath and doing process automation um, and doing, you know, RPA tasks for, you know, business operations, business logistics. Um, so anything that's considered like repetitive, uh, you know, cyclical tasks that have to get done regularly that are, you know, very easily documented are going to be taken over by RPA bots, which are less mechanical and more software based robotics automation. And I can kind of like give you a, a good example of like what, it, what that's similar to. So RPA would be very similar to like creating a macro in Microsoft Excel. So if you're familiar with macros, like VBA macros, think of being able to create a macro across every piece of software that a business uses and have that, 
you know, like robot or bot or macro go out and collect the information in different systems and be able to compile all that information together, format it in a, in a chart or a dashboard or a KPI sheet that makes sense, whether that's a PDF or an Excel file or something else, and then sending that off to the manager or the supervisor or the owner of that information and giving them a quick and clear snapshot of what needs to be done. So this was kind of my quick little overview about robotics, where I see it is now, where I see it going in the future. If you are interested in working with Learn Robotics to improve your automation skills, I would encourage you to sign up for a conversation. We can chat a little bit more about you and your goals for the future. If you want to just become more knowledgeable about robotics, if you know you want to make a career move, if you see the value in where robotics is going to be going and where automation is going to be going, whether that's robots for robots or having robotic skills that you can deploy in any industry, um, please book a call with me and my team. There's going to be a link below this uh, podcast in the show notes. If you're watching on YouTube, there'll be a link in the description. You can sign up for a robot robotics road mapping session with me. And we can just talk a little bit more about your goals and where you see yourself headed. If you're a good fit, you'll be able to join our program. And if not, it'll give you some clarity on kind of what the next steps are for you and your career or you and your robotics journey. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Liz from Learn Robotics, and I will see you next time.